After firing into Milan to their first Serie A title since the 2009-2010 season, it is fair to say Romelu Lukaku has established himself as one of football's best strikers. The Belgian striker scored 24 goals with a further 10 assists to help Inter finally break Juventus' grip hold in Italian football. He is now on a mission to have success with Belgium in international tournaments. But what makes his rising success even more inspiring is the journey and the sacrifice he and his family had to make in order to allow Lukaku to become a professional footballer which will be explained in this video. As always, if you do enjoy this video, please do give it a like, subscribe and turn on notification bells to help the channel out. Now let's get straight into it. Romelu Lukaku was born in Antwerp in Belgium to Congolese parents. You would think that as his father Roger Lukaku was a professional footballer at the time, Lukaku would have had a fairly decent childhood without too much difficulties. However, you would be mistaken as despite earning money as a pro footballer, poor financial mismanagement meant a difficult period for the Lukaku family growing up. Lukaku recalls these difficult times by saying, My father had been a pro footballer, but he was at the end of his career and the money was all gone. I walked into the kitchen and I saw my mum at the refrigerator with the box of milk, like normal. But this time she was mixing something in with it. I didn't understand what was going on. Then she brought my lunch over to me and she was smiling like everything was cool. But I realised right away what was going on. She was mixing water in with the milk. We didn't have enough money to make it last the whole week. We were broke, not just poor, but broke. As well as having limited food, there were also various occasions when the lights would not work as the electricity bills weren't paid, as well as not having any hot water to take a bath and wash as normal. With rats also running around the apartment from time to time, it was a challenging situation. The limited money his mum and dad had meant they were surviving on a day-to-day -day basis and even having to borrow bread from the bakery to pay them back at a later date. Despite his young age, this built a relentless drive and determination in Lukaku. At the age of 6 he recalls, I didn't say a word, I didn't want her to stress, I just ate my lunch, but I swear to god I made a promise to myself that day. It was like somebody snapped their fingers and woke me up. I knew exactly what I had to do and what I was going to do. Most 6 year olds are oblivious to the struggles of their parents and are just preoccupied with playing and enjoying their life. Yet here we have a young man who suddenly felt the need to put the whole weight of his family's future on his shoulders which led to him already thinking about how he was going to save his family from poverty and all at the age of 6. This difficult period of his life meant Lukaku would already have elite mental strength. Despite the difficult times his mindset was already one of knowing he was going to make it happen. Of his mental strength Lukaku said People in football love to talk about mental strength when I'm the strongest dude you're ever going to meet. Because I remember sitting in the dark with my brother and my mum saying our prayers and thinking, believing, knowing it's going to happen. There is an extra quality in people who grow up in poverty. Someone who's already at the bottom of life's ladder already doesn't have much to lose. And add to that encountering constant questions about yourself, receiving racist remarks and just hate in general and you create an individual who is wise beyond their years. Someone who's wary with an almost constant chip on the shoulder mentality. And as Lukaku began to grow and get taller and stronger, the accusations and racism began. However, Lukaku used this to fuel his desire and mental state even more. He recalls, When I was 11 years old, I was playing for the Lears youth team and one of the parents from the other team literally tried to stop me from going on the pitch. He was like, how old is this kid? Where's his ID? Where's he from? I thought, where am I from? What? I was born in Antwerp. I'm from Belgium. My dad wasn't there because he didn't have a car to drive me to away games. I was all alone and had to stand up for myself. I went and got my ID from my bag and showed it to all the parents and they were passing it around inspecting it and I remember my blood just rushing through me and I thought, oh I'm going to kill your son even more now. I was already going to kill him but now I'm going to destroy him. You're going to drive the boy home crying now. With situations like this happening constantly, Lukaku always went out on the pitch with a point to prove. Not only to himself and his family, but to all those who doubted him on the sidelines, to all those who accused him of not being who he said he was. Some people go into their shell when confronted with racism, and some people like Lukaku make the same people eat their words and pay, and that's exactly what he did. At age 12, Lukaku was already making waves in the youth leagues in Belgian football, scoring 76 goals in 34 games. With this extraordinary scoring record, he wanted to share the news with his grandfather from his mother's side, who was one of the most important people in his life. However, unknown to Lukaku at the time, but it would be the last time he spoke to him. Whilst boasting about his great season, his grandfather seemed a bit disinterested, instead asking his grandson to take care of his mother. 
repeating constantly until Lukaku promised that he would. Five days after that conversation, his grandfather passed away and Lukaku now understood why he was so insistent on the phone. One of Lukaku's biggest disappointments is his grandfather not being able to see that he did indeed keep his promise. He kept his promise age 16 for Anderlecht, one of Belgium's biggest clubs, making his debut in a playoff final against Standard Liège. Despite the massive burden being lifted off his shoulders now that he had signed a professional contract, Romelu didn't just relax and take it easy. His ambition to be the greatest Belgian footballer in history drove his meteoric rise from Anderlecht to Chelsea at age 18. He then went on to play for West Brom on loan before arriving at Everton. He would then get his dream move to Manchester United, however despite a good first season, things didn't work out as planned which meant he was transferred to Inter Milan for 80 million euros where he is now. Despite being only 28 years old, Lukaku is already Belgium's top goalscorer in history with 59 goals as of today, a whopping 27 goals ahead of second place Eden Hazard. It won't be a surprise if Lukaku does indeed one day get to 100 goals or close to it by the time he retires. However, a thing that irks Romelu is that when he plays good for Belgium, he's known as Lukaku the Belgian striker, but when he plays bad, he's known as Lukaku the Belgian striker of Congolese descent, showing that there's still racism, however subtle it may seem. Football aside, Lukaku wishes he had only one more phone call with his grandfather. When asked what he would say to him, Romelu said he would say, See, I told you, your daughter is okay. No more rats in the apartment, no more sleeping on the floor, no more stress. We're good now, we're good. They don't have to check the ID anymore, they know our name. So yeah, that was a difficult path Romelu Lukaku had to take to make his football dreams come true. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please do give the video a like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss a future video and I hope to see you again on Football Scope in the future.